TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. And if you want to catch a live, previous lives, or be ready for any live that might randomly happen, twitch.com is where you go. Username's at the bottom of the screen. You see it. Also, we got Patreon. I just renewed my Patreon subscription for another year. You know what I'm saying? So we locked in. Um, this is Best Ever Food Review Shows. As we all know, I'll be coming to the UK very soon. Hopefully this year, maybe like, I can't come October, but like November. Man, yeah, yeah, November. November sound good to me. I can't even, no, nah, I can't wait. November. <laughs> November. Talk to me. November, December, early December, I'll be out there. Um, Yeah, best ever food review show, man. London's outrageous $1,000 curry. British Indian breakdown. British Indian breakdown. Like British Indian takeaway? Is that what we doing right now? Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. I understand that's when it's called. This is a premium curry. It costs over a thousand dollars and it was beautifully constructed by Chef Atul here at Kanishka restaurant in L Let me stop you right there. Thousand dollars for a curry? It's not happening. Not happening. Not in not even if I had a thousand dollars to spend on a curry, I'm not doing it. Under <laughs> Today I'm on a mission to explore the unlikely world of British curry at three different places with three different price tags. Yeah, lock me in right here. Right here. This look good. This look good too, actually. No, lock me in right here. It was not on our menu in the beginning, but due to popular demand, we, we caved. You caved? And by the end of this video, you'll see the most expensive curry that money can buy. So what goes in- Stop, stop. Let's just get to it. Did we get to it? This is started in the year. A curry location chat. On years of so it's a pro you'll enjoy such a food. A year. We just do cloves, cardamom, oh, cumin, and nutmeg. This is broken down. Here we go. It starts with a ladle full of oil, chopped onions, and green chilies. Right now we're at the Indian YMCA. I've never heard of an Indian YMCA, but I have heard of a YMCA. In the USA, it's just a gym. But here it's very different. The chef builds its signature taste with star anise, mace, cinnamon, bay leaves, cloves, cardamom, cumin. There's a restaurant in the YMCA in the UK? In London? And nutmeg. This is YMC Indian Student Hostel, London. This is started oh. in the year 1990. Now it's more than 105 years. We are here to provide subsidized uh, accommodation and excellent food for international students for a very, very low cost. But where are the subsidies coming from? Next, diced tomato, garlic ginger paste, coriander. This is a great question. Coriander powder, chili powder, turmeric powder, and garam masala are added. We have a trading organization, which is a hotel, and they sort of provide the funding for us to keep the costs low for the charity. Cubes of lamb join the pan with a cup of water. From here, the chef lets it simmer, soaking up all those flavors. The British developed a deep appreciation for Indian food during their 89 years of colonial rule in India. These days, Indians are the largest minority group in the UK, so it surprises me to hear Sam say, It is very difficult to get the Indian food. In the in London, it is. Yeah, it's it's yeah. not just. A is it? I ain't never heard that. It's about Indian food, it's about a home cooked meal. You go to some Indian restaurant, we like to call it Asian restaurants, and the food is sort of catered towards the English or the British taste. Sure, what's wrong with that? It's a bit bland. Ah. It could be a bit bland. <laughs> so here we have chefs from different parts of India. We have interactions with the students, find out what. That's crazy because the national dish is not this. This carrot, isn't it? Right. They like and they tend to give it that little subtle touches that will sort of make them feel like it's a home cooked meal. Our chef tosses fresh coriander leaves, curry leaves, and half a tablespoon of salt into the pan. He lets it simmer a bit longer before confidently sending it to the dining hall. That look good. <laughs> Seema, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I have a deep love for Indian food. I love Indian food. 
like not the spiciest top tier, but Indian food be. I used to work at um, Discover, Discover HQ, and they had a cafeteria and they served Indian food on Wednesdays. What? Banging. I'm surprised. Like I'm surprised they don't have more Indian restaurants like that are accessible, like fast food like joints, like because they got like. They got like Chinese takeaway, Chinese restaurants everywhere in America. They should have Indian food, the same setup. Like I come in, grab it real quick, dip, not pay an arm and a leg. You know what I'm saying? Meet Seema, this gifted British. Samosa, love it. Haven't had one. Oh no, I'm saying samosa. Mango lasil, I'm sorry. Indian was a chef de partie at various Gordon Ramsay restaurants. Now she's a cherished food content creator. In Indian culture, food is stuck. I lost my virginity to an Indian girl. Off topic, too much info, my bad. A prevalent and important factor that kind of brings everyone together. My mom, she always made Indian food growing up. We always had a fresh meal every night. We never had leftovers, never had frozen food. We never had takeaway. So because of that, it kind of made me realize how important food was to me and gain, kind of gave me my love for cooking. In general, Indian food in London, is it expensive? I guess it really just depends where you're going. London okay. itself. It's expensive in America, 100%. Oh, it's quite expensive. Right. If you're going on the outskirts of London, it will definitely be a lot cheaper. Here I'm told that if you came in for lunch and you got lamb curry, maybe some rice, it's going to be under 10 pounds. Is that pretty good? Yeah, 10 pounds. That's what I see. If they could do that in America somewhere, I'm even willing to pay like 13. But every time I want something, like if I want like curry chicken, like I got to pay like a dub just for chicken and white rice? Nothing extra? I can't even get a drink under a dub. Like, no. This is great, especially lambs is expensive meat. You know, you're probably getting a big portion of it. So 10 pounds is fantastic. I say we give it a shot. Yes. You can tell it's really, good. really good when it has like this oil on the top here. Yeah. That's okay. the sign of a well-made curry, I would say. If we were in India right now, would we be eating with our hands or would we Yeah, I would eat all of this with my hands. I'd be like, I don't even know how to eat this with a spoon, to be honest. Oh, okay. You should just eat however you normally eat. Yeah. So this is parasha. It's really hard to make. Flour, egg. Wait, what is that? However, you don't really eat it. Yeah. So this is parasha. It's rich. I thought that bread was called something else, but okay. Hard to make. Flour, egg, milk, sugar, salt, oil, and water. Join hands in the making of paratha. To get the dough so soft and be able to make it so thin is such a skill to do. And it's interesting when they make it, like they don't write down how to make it. They don't have a specific quantities. It's just how you feel. Yeah, the recipe has to be in your heart. Yeah, it And maybe does. a little in your yeah. DNA. He then gathers and coils the dough like a turban for running it over with a rolling pin. A short trip to the flat top with multiple oil drizzles turns this flatbread brown and crispy. Last, but perhaps the most crucial, the paratha smash. I don't think I ever had that bread. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love paratha so much. Just see the set, the set it's so flaky and- no, I've had that, but it was called something else. I promise you. Naan. There it is. Naan is different than that? Yeah, I never had that there. I feel like I've been cheated my whole life. That's crazy. Chicago got a... a no, Chicago had a... <laughs> Y'all go... So, on the... Of Devon... 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 Between Devon and Sheridan or Broadway to maybe Clark... I think... No, is it Clark? Yeah, it might be Clark on Devon Street. It's called Little India. That's what we call it. It's called Little India. Uh, it when, as soon as you get in between them two streets, it feels like you went to on a on a seventeen hour flight, and you've landed in the middle of India. They got the restaurants that got the food for good price. There's that that's ever since I moved to Florida. I've been looking for some Indian food and it's been twenty, thirty dollars for for two items, and I'm not going. Layered, the flavors are outstanding. It's spicy and full of spices. The lamb has a nice lamby taste. It tastes like lamb. I'm so bad at describing Indian food because oftentimes there might be twelve or twenty-four spices in there. Sure, I could say, oh, I taste the chili powder and the turmeric is in there, and so is every other spice. So, how do you describe Indian food? I would say. This is very well spiced, but it's not spicy. You can get definitely taste the whole spices, like the clove and the cinnamon, which give it more of like a... I believe 
somebody that's never had Indian food, if they taste it for the first time, they will know it's Indian food off top. Earthy kind of flavor into it, as well as the, the main spices like chili powder, grand coriander, grand cumin. And I think that's quite difficult is the balancing of spices in Indian food. This is our first and most affordable location, but from here, we're gonna ratchet it up a bit. Later today, I'll be trying a- I don't feel like that one even counts. Curry, one that's both I'm talking. This video, pork cutter, but let me buddy, they're on your shin. Contently contraption, like the best, better help. Best ever food to start your journey today. Now, I don't feel like that first place that he went to should count though, because it's not op open to the general public. Back to the show. To learn more about this British Indian dish, we've come here to Thai Eps. This restaurant is a 50-year-old family business that's earned its reputation for its pure Pakistani flavor that's hard to find in London. My dad used to make his one pot of curry. At first, people were struggling with the spices, and people used to tell my dad, Mr. Thai Eps, dial it down a bit, you'll get more customers. My dad said, I'd rather stop. A man of integrity. Yeah. Greeting us today, Alim, the second generation owner of Thai Eps. Worked out. In coming here, I thought there was just Indian food, but actually I'm told this is British Indian food that you'll find all over London. It is very difficult to get the Indian food in the in London. What is the difference to you between Indian and British Indian? British food, with its focus on simplicity and natural flavors, contrasts sharply with the spice-rich complexity of Indian cuisine. When fused together, they form British Indian food, tailored to the British palate, which may mean fewer bold spices, or as Sandeep describes... It's a bit... What? Bland. There's some British Indian restaurants, they do shortcuts. They use spice in a jar, canned, and they just cheat. But us here, we're, we're keeping it real. Despite Aline's- I don't want spice in a jar. I want, if I'm going for the Indian experience, I want the whole shebang. Pride in authentic Pakistani flavors. One of the most popular dishes at Tayeb's is a dish that was invented here in the United Kingdom. It was not on our menu, but- Chicken tikka masala. Due to popular demand, we caved. You caved? We caved. This dish is chicken tikka masala. Do you know how this dish came to be? I, think I didn't know that was British made until until I started locked in, until I got locked in with the UK. Because they used to serve that all the time at Sadek, where I worked at. And I was like, man, this is this a hit. <laughs> this is it. This is fire. I originated in Glasgow. The Scott Man was making chicken tikka, which is just chicken, just grilled, basically. Chicken tikka. Cubes of chicken breast are marinated with a mix of chili, garlic, ginger, lemon juice, homemade spice, coriander, oil, and yogurt. Then they're skewered and plopped on the grill. Um, someone came in, I think someone who British came in and said we wanted more sauce in it. So he added a tin of tomato soup, which made it a lot more creamier, tomatoier, a lot less spicy. He gave it back and the man was absolutely obsessed with it, couldn't get enough of it, and then they put it on the menu. And I think that's actually like one of the national dishes of England. Yeah, yeah, it is. Chicken tikka masala, eh? AF's kitchen. One of those. It might have caved. We caved. Their standards here allow no canned tomato sauce. Fresh tomatoes, onions, and plenty of oil go into a pot where the chef adds garlic ginger paste, chili powder, turmeric powder, and salt. He mixes the pot well, then blends everything into a smooth, vibrant orange soup. If you go to India now, can you find it on menus there? Yeah, you can now. It's on the cook over. That's wild. Fans of indo paki cuisine might notice the absence of curry leaves, coconut milk, and the usual whole dried spices in this dish. Are there other Pakistani or Indian recipes that have been adapted in this way to suit the local palate? That's just the one. Just the one? Yeah. Amazing. The chicken tikka joins the sauce and together they jump into a fiery vessel. I like chicken tikka masala, but it's not, it, it, I've always thought like it's, it got a lot of flavor, but like it don't taste like the rest of the stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I should have, I should have been clued in by that. I was like, and, 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 and like, I like a little bit of spice, not too much spice, and it don't got no spice at all to me. So I'd be like, it's good though, like the flavors and things of that nature. Ah, uh, please. That look good. Did you sell first? Oh no, you're my guest. So okay, let me do you. I accept. <laughs> Big. I'm surprised nobody made a chicken tiki sala tiki masala burrito yet. That'd be fire with the Indian Suck with the Indian rice, uh, and 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 just the chicken tikka masala in there, wrapped in naan. <laughs> Put a tortilla on it on the outside. 
pieces of chicken yeah. and lots of sauce. We've got some butter naan right here. Yeah, it looks so buttery. Oh my God. Here, the naan is crafted from a dough blend of flour, water, yeast, sugar, and sometimes yogurt or milk. Naan is typically cooked in a clay oven, where the dough clings to the walls and bakes to golden brown puffy perfection. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Will I be disappointed? Will I be blown away? That's how you eat it right there. Will I be saddened? Will I be distraught? Boy, you finna have the time of your life eating this. <laughs> how it tastes, Sonny? Sonny? Mm -hmm. mm. The flavors? Yeah. Not a ton of spices, yeah. very tomatoey, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. pretty heavy, pretty oily. And that's it. No spiciness, it's not hot. The spice is literally coming from the tomato. Yeah, it's a very, very mild curry. It still has that like whisper of like a traditional Indian curry. I love the idea that an Indian street food vendor went up to my ear and whispered, Masala. <laughs> I was like, is the masala in the room with me now? But it's still really delicious. It's very, very tomato-y. I actually really like the char of the chicken as well. Yeah. I'm hungry. And there's a little bit of the char flavor from it being roasted over the charcoal. So overall, I like it. There's something satisfying about it, but then there's also something that's missing. The spice. The spice. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, of all the Indian food, I like my mom's the best. But when I'm going to a restaurant where I want to have loads of friends be happy, somewhere like this is absolutely perfect. It's like a gateway Indian dish. If you're... Did he introduce this to this young lady? Because I totally missed it. She's... The Indian food's gonna be too spicy for you. It's a great way to kind of get used to it. And then you can start delving into like the really spicy stuff. It was Her face card is valid. <laughs> Respectfully. Very nice to try both these meals with you and to get your perspective. Yeah. That said, from here we are parting ways. From here, I'm headed to a restaurant that's serving a curry that costs a thousand pounds. God. Could you even imagine what it could be? Is it like a thousand curries? I think they found an endangered animal. Oh. Yeah. Kanishka, in their words, offers a modern interpretation of dishes from northeastern India in a sophisticated dining room. So what we call fine dining Indian here is whatever I create based on the ingredients I get here. However, using my own techniques and spices. We definitely okay. have lobster on the menu. We also have venison. We use truffle from time to time. We sell our three-course lunch menu for 45 pounds. But we also sell our tasting menu paired with wines for 250 pounds. The captain here is Chef Atul, the first Indian chef. Count me out to earn a Michelin star. Now, he has two. Today, you're taking on the challenge of making a curry that costs a thousand pounds. When we came to you with this challenge, why'd you accept it? Why'd you want to take this on? I'm always up for a challenge. We are not taught no in India. We are taught yes. Before you finish your sentence, it's a yes, we can. That's hospitality for us. Do you think when this comes out that there will be haters out there, that there will be people who say Indian food is meant to be humble, it's not meant to be this premium, high-end, inaccessible, super expensive food? I mean, what would you say to people who have that point well, of view? You know, you're right, but that's for every cuisine. You know, French cuisine can also be very humble and sweet and nice and easy and you have to pay oh my god i remember when i was in my homes when i was in chicago they had this crepe restaurant i used to order it every morning <laughs> even at lunch i get a, they just had crepes on crepes on crepes man i love crepes chicago got really every food man anything you could think of we got it Mm. Very little money for it, but French cuisine is also massively elevated where a thousand pound a dish would be actually nothing. So in just a moment, you're going to be making this 1,000 pound curry. I would love if you could show us some of the ingredients. Sure we can. This is beautifully live, recently caught lobster. So obviously it comes quite a prime price. The lobster is poached with mace, star anise and black cardamom. Did you say with mace? It comes quite a prime price. The lobster is poached with mace, star anise and black cardamom. Then it's de -shelled. So I've just seared the lobster and left it in spice butter where it'll be poaching. Uh, my aim is to keep the temperature of the lobster below 55 degrees centigrade, so it's just nicely congealed. But just you right. wait, because this isn't even the most expensive item on his ingredient list. Models are Truffles. really prime oh. mushrooms, which I'm hugely fond of. And come summer, British forests are full of models and we have them for us. You can get dried models also that... I don't know, I don't like how that look. You know how when you take a, like, if you t be in the pool too long or you take a bath for too long, that's how your hands look. I don't like that. Can be cheaper. You can also get bulk produced models, which can be done in a contained environment. But these are wild forage models. Scallops, which I'm quite proud of because they are from Okney Island and they're hand- Like scallops. 
Uh, to me, these are smaller, but I have had scallops which are as large as my palm, but this will do because lobster will take the main plate. Atul sears the scallops with butter, curry leaves, chili, garlic, and ginger. Curry then he lets them rest, waiting for the other components. And especially to do a thousand tahan curry, you've got to use beluga caviar. Harvested from the... Okay, okay, I want to try caviar. But like, I want to go to a restaurant and somebody be like, oh yeah, I got you, it's on me. And then I order the caviar, not on my bill. Like, I want to try it on somebody else's tab. You hear what I'm saying? Beluga sturgeon, primarily found in the Caspian Sea, beluga caviar is one of the world's most luxurious and sought after delicacies. In short, that means it's really expensive. This by far is our most expensive. Did that say? Delicacies, in short. 3,000 to 10,000 a pound? I'm in the wrong business. How I find, how I, I'm gonna go start fishing. That means it's really expensive. This by far is our most expensive ingredient of the day. And I can't wait. I'm gonna start trapping beluga eggs. <laughs> wait to see how these rich fish eggs pair with curry. And now we're gonna start making the curry which will go with it. Moldy sauce is Chef Atul's pick for the base. It starts with oil, mustard seeds, green curry leaves, green chili, and garlic. And I'm not trying to color the garlic, just sweat it, and then chopped onions or chopped shallots, whichever you prefer. A pinch of salt, and once onions are nicely sweat, then you add turmeric, and we have coconut milk here. The authentic moldy recipe is a rich, creamy, mildly spiced fish stew from Kerala, India. There's not one dish I can put up there and say this really represents India. The cuisine is quite varied, from <coughs> north to south, east to west. When I say moily, everybody knows their mind transports them to Kerala. The fish which is caught on the backwaters or from sea, cooked in moily sauce is called mean moily. But I'm going to call it lobster moily and I'm using native lobster what we get here, one of the best in the world in my opinion. Okay guys, the sauce is ready. I'm just going to plate it now. So this is the curry which we have made. I've just put the lobster in and I'm going to put one of the scallops. One of the mussels have gone in. I'm just going to give nice slivers of summer truffle at the moment. Beluga caviar we're going to put on top of the scallop and something close to a heart. This is called monk's beard which have been tempted. That is worth thousand pounds. I don't see a thousand dollars. You cannot a thousand dollars. The the beluga caviar is the most expensive thing on the plate. It's probably seven hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars. Lolly, put her there. Cheers. Cheers. Lolly, a mega fan of all things Indian, has visited India seven times. Her YouTube channel features the best of Indian food and culture in London and abroad. Though she's experienced curries near and far, this will be her first elevated curry. Well, that looks like caviar. And her first caviar. This is weird. This black stuff looks like wood. And her first truffle. We've got like a, a lobster fishy looking thing. Her first taste of lobster. And a scallop, I guess. Yeah, let's see. She ain't never had lobster. And her first scallop, too. I don't know what the yellow stuff is, though. That Well, that would be the curry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think we right. should first try the curry itself. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, it smells very good. No, 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 no. This is a thousand American dollars. Oh, so it's 1,300 pounds? Oh wow, that's really good. That's so nice. Spicy and a ton of coconut milk coming through. It's super rich, that is actually super delicious. I did not expect that. I it could eat a... a huge bowl of that. It's very mellow though, it's not too spicy. Yeah, so. the spices are well balanced. Let's try next the scallop. Already the caviar and the scallop is a beautiful pairing. They go well together. I believe they taste good together, but I just believe that my wallet ain't built like that. Things are not set up like that in my life <laughs> to be doing this. Scallop is sweet. The caviar is briny, very heavy. But you mix that with this onslaught of spices from the curry. It's really an incredible combination. What do you think? Slimy. Slimy? So, did you say this is your first scallop? It's a very eclectic, very well-seasoned palate you have there, ma'am. Wow. Yeah. How old are you? Huh? Nothing. How old am I? Yeah, sorry. I forgot. That's <laughs> rude to ask. I'm 34. You know what's interesting, though? The inverse of that. Am I? Yeah, sorry, I forgot. That's <laughs> rude to ask. I'm 34. 34? I was gonna say like 29. You know what's interesting though? The inverse of that, I was in my younger 30s the first time I ever tried curry. It unlocked a part of my brain. It was like in a video game when you unlock a part of the map. I was like, I didn't know this flavor combination could exist. It blew my mind and I love it. Perhaps that will happen to you with, with lobster. lobster. <laughs> but first, this is the morel mushroom. 
What it tastes like. Oh, that's good. It tastes like steak. Yeah, the texture of it is almost like a... <laughs> Chill. Chill. I don't believe you. Beef tripe. The cow stomach. Yeah. Yeah? You think so? Well, I've never had cow yeah, I know, stomach. I know but, you No, haven't. but it, I, I could feel like it's earthy and mm -hmm. meaty. It's really good. At last, we have the lobster. Now... The lobster is not just a lobster. It's also been topped with this right here. This is black truffle. In my opinion, truffles have a lot better smell than taste. I don't think they have a very profound- Try it without the truffle first, then with it. I wonder strong taste. Damn, ma'am. <laughs> you got it right up on your nostril, don't you? Are you- Yeah, don't insert it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, bro. Golly, I thought she had a key right there. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> it smells like leather. Leather? I don't know. Maybe. I could actually, yeah. No, I think you're right. This one does actually have a little bit of that kind of leathery smell. They're not all the same. She still calls me. Mm -hmm. Um, I think maybe I'd been put off lobster because the amount of shrimps I had in Vietnam. You know, they're the massive ones. Yeah. And I had them on a boat and I felt really seasick and mm. it put me off. You got to get back on the, the boat, so to yeah. speak. <laughs> I think that tastes wonderful. Actually, these are some really potent truffles. Very expensive. I could kind of taste... I'm going with option two. I used to kind of smell it at the same time while it was in my mouth. It's not a strong flavor, but it's something that you kind of like taste almost in your nose than in your mouth. Do you know what I mean? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Putting the price aside, as someone I love her, yeah. one who's certainly Talk had to more curries than me, would you eat this again? Yeah, I would. Mm, me too. I think it tastes delicious. As somebody who's traveled so much in India, who's eaten there, and then who's also eaten plenty of Indian food here in London, what do you feel like some of the differences are between each place? Because it is different. For example, have you had chicken tikka masala? I have. So the, what's catered for the British, they're a lot more creamier and basically just a lot more basic, I would say, curries. Whereas actually Indian food itself, it's not just about curries, it's about many different things and it's like much deeper flavors and more complex dishes, I'd say. Do you think there's still a place in London for the chicken tikka masala? No. I think soon the tikka masala might be a thing of the past. So even though the chicken tikka masala... So when y'all order... Oh, no. It's not my favorite curry ever, but here's why I think it should still exist. Because when you compare British food and Indian food, they're polar opposites. And so with chicken tikka masala, it gives people a bridge, a safe harbor, a sanctuary, a place where they can go where they can feel safe and to try something new so they can gently step out of their comfort zone and slowly acclimate to a new different type of cuisine that's wildly different from British food. But if people want to level up at any time, they're welcome to. Yeah, I, I think it's time for people. I can't wait till somebody come to the, to, from, from the UK to Chicago. I'm just going to, like, let's go. Let me put you on the real food spots, man. People to branch out and find out what real Indian food is. Is that your real name, Lolly? My real name is Laura. <sighs> could just skip this part. How do we skip this part? Laura got a little... Thank you. No. The full these tags. But at the end of the day, I must choose one curry that gave me the most bang for my buck. Was it the affordable curry at the Indian YMCA? Was it the controversial chicken tikka? Yeah, this is, see, even this is the price range that I'm willing to pay, 1546. I'm, I'm rocking with this. <laughs> Masala at our second location? Or was it the thousand pound curry that cost over $1,200? Well, my choice for the curry that gave me the most bang no. for my buck was absolutely the YMCA curry. Those are some of the best Indian flavors I've had in a long time. And, and honestly, I just can't believe how affordable. If I could get the option number two with this kind of bread too, I want this bread. This bread look good. It all was. But what do you guys think? Which curry would you most like to try next time you come to London? Anyways, guys, that is it for this video. I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who joined me. First of all, Seema. You can find Seema. Seema. on Instagram. She's also on TikTok. Salute, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post.